We've all heard the expression about ignoring the elephant in the room, right? It's about how there's something really huge standing there, and it's in the way of anyone actually getting anything done. And it eats up everything in sight. Like your full chip DRC run, for example. It's huge. It takes forever to run. It sucks up all the resources. It's gray and has a big trunk. Wait, scratch that gray and big trunk part. But it is huge, and we need to stop ignoring it and actually do something about it before it eats up everything in sight. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Today, my guest is Christian Decon from Cadence Design Systems, and we're going to talk about how to tame that big old DRC elephant. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find out more information about the Pegasus Verification System from Cadence Design Systems. Hi, Christian. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. So we're talking about physical verification. So why do we need a new DRC tool? Yeah, we need a new DRC tool because the current solution on the market has been developed like 10, 15 years ago. And they did their job so far, but what we see is that with every node, the design rule complexity is increasing and the design rule number is increasing. And then the increase in rule number is like doubling every generation, but they get so complex that you need so many operations to fulfill this rule that you see exponential increase. And that put a lot of stress on the current solution. Okay, so let's talk about the underlying issues we're trying to solve here. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people in the market think DRC is fine. They used to run the DRC tool overnight, and that was fine. Right. But, uh, you know, 28 nanometer again was a tipping point, and we have some example of customer running with the leading DRC solution of today at 16 nanometer. And even though they break down the sub deck in four different decks, they still need four days to run a full iteration. And that's one iteration. Wow, yeah. That's far from overnight, right? Absolutely. So why can't we solve this with just more CPU power? Yeah, that, that's a good question. People like you, you have more and more farm CPU available, and then you will like to use that. Sure. The truth is that all the current solutions are based on multi-threaded architecture, and they've been tweaked by the EDA provider to be able to run on several machines, but they're really efficient on running one machine. And as soon as you go on multiple number of machines, the scalability is tipping off. Right. And we see roughly above 64 CPU, you start to lose CPU utilization, and then we kind of cap at 200 CPU with the current solution. Okay, so what's the real impact here? The real impact is at two levels. First of all, when you're in a design cycle, you run at your block level. And if your block now are significant, you know, in the latest technology node, your block can be 5 million instance. That can run long time. That can impact implementation time. But where it's really make a big impact on your tape out is when you're at the sign off tape out level. Mm. And you have four days of DRC sign off and you have like three or four increment that gives you 12, 16 days, that can impact your time to market. That's really, really bad. Sure. And then if we look from a historical viewpoint, for EDA DRC, we had three different generations. We, what we call the first generation was Dracula. Okay. User like you were behind the screen, you know, and the machine was at their foot, warming up their foot, and they yeah. <laughs> run, start the run, one CPU, single run, it worked nice, no need to worry about in design. You know, at that time, physical verification was really uh, simple. And that worked till uh, 0.18 micron. 0.18 micron, then you needed key support, you need bigger computation because the design was bigger. Then we needed to come out with multi-threaded processing that were like Ashura, PVS, or third party. Mm -hmm. And as I say earlier, at 28 nanometer, we start to see also the multi-threaded architecture running out of steam. That's why we came out with Pegasus, which is what we call the third generation of physical verification tool that is a massively parallel architecture, near linear scalability on thousands of CPU and cloud ready. Okay. So where are we going with this Pegasus tool? Yeah, th th when we started working on the tool, we had a pretty simple goal. First, we wanted uh, an order of magnitude speed up 10x okay. versus the current uh, solution. has to be driven by the CPU scalability because you, as a customer, you have more and more CPUs. And that has to be the best in class scalability. And of course, it has to be cloud ready because we have more and more customer, especially the mid-size, small-size customer that want to be able to use the cloud for peak usage. 
They sure. don't want to buy 1,000 CPU for one or two usage per year, right? They yeah. want to have the cloud accessibility. Of course, it has to be foundry qualified. And that's also a beauty is that PVS deck, our previous generation deck, are already enabled for all the foundry, all the nodes. Mm. And Pegasus, even though it's a brand new tool, will use the old deck, meaning we don't have to work on the full enablement. Gotcha. It has to be accurate, sign of accuracy. You don't have a DRC tool if you're not accurate, of course. And then the last point is, of course, integration in our custom platform, Virtuoso, leading on the market, Innovus digital implementation system, which has put us in a really sweet spot uh, versus competition. Excellent. So let's dive in and talk about some details of Pegasus. Yeah, we started working four years ago on Pegasus, and we had like three major angle we were looking at first the large design size that are increasing and increasing yeah you know the latest nodes you can see 1.5 billion instance that's huge amount of data right right and we talk about the increasing rule complexity and that's not going to stop right even people looking at euv reducing the number of coloring this and that, the complexity is not going it might stall a little bit but the complexity today is already overwhelming for the current solution yeah and then we talk about the efficient utilization of large CPU. So, Christian, is this just a rebranding or is this a new technology? What's what's unique here? Yeah, what's unique is that it's a brand new technology developed in-house. We didn't acquire that. We didn't leverage PVS except for the deck. Okay. It's a brand new technology and we develop a lot of technology, but we have three main components that we like to highlight. The first one is the stream processing. This is a really efficient way to do parallel run. You take a big problem and you break that at a really atomical computation. Give you an example, right? If you take an image, you could process the image or pixelize it and process each pixel. Mm -hmm. That's more or less what we did. We managed to break down the DRC problem into a million thread. Mm, okay. In theory, that gives us a million thread or distributed process capability, which is not really the case. You don't want to do that. But that gives us a lot of flexibility and optimization how we want to package this thread together. Now, the next one is what we call data flow architecture. And this is more or less what people know as asynchronous processing or concurrent processing. That enables us to not have serial processing happening, but a lot of concurrent things going on together. Okay. You take this minion thread from the stream processing that can talk to each other and you can start them in parallel in an efficient way. And that gives you a really nice way to optimize your CPU utilization as well. Now, if you go to the last one, which is the pipeline infrastructure, massively pipeline infrastructure, this is something also new in EDA. It's instead of waiting each step to be done before you start the next step, which mm -hmm. is kind of inefficient, especially if you have a large number of data. Sure. You starting the next step while you have sufficient number of data from the previous step. I'll oh. give you an example. Okay. Current tool, they run the full design and design are pretty big. That can take 10, 15 minutes, sometimes hours. And then they start the DRC. What's going on during all this time, right? With a pipeline infrastructure, while you load the design, you're starting processing on the information you already get. And it's going to start with the first step. And once you have enough information from the first step, you can start the second step and so on. The advantage doing that is that you can do all this in memory. It's mm. like a, a flow of computation. You don't have write out writing. You save a lot of IOs time. It's extremely efficient. Sure. Now, between these three main technology, and again, these three technology are really brand new in EDA, especially the stream processing and the data flow architecture never been used in EDA product before. You know, stream processing is something that's been used, you know, by uh, you know, image compressing, but also by a uh, web search engine. Data flow architecture is something used by Twitter, for instance, right? how yeah. to handle like billions of tweets with millions of customers. And the pipeline infrastructure is something that has been used in a couple of products in EDA, but not for any current DRC solution. Okay, so Christian, what is this going to really buy me as an engineer? When is this tool really going to make an impact in my design life? Yeah, if you remember when we talk about, you know, the, the, the cycle of uh, implementation and depart, you will gain in every step of your implementation and depart. Okay. You block that are pretty big, you will see a performance improvement, meaning your DRC on the daily basis is going to be easier. But when you will reach this crunch time at depart, Iteration, instead of being four days iteration each, it's going to be like overnight. Or depending on number of CPU, you get back the control on your tape out mm, for okay. the physical sign-off. Okay, so you talked about cloud-ready. Now, what does this use model look like 
Now, I know EDA people tend to be a little scared about Claude anything in their tools. Yeah, and then Claude is not really new to EDA, but true Claude readiness, that's what we bring as new. Any tool today, not only physical fashion, could say that they're Claude ready, but they will require a huge master, you know, like for instance, uh, PVS, right? Or right. A- equivalent from uh, third party will require a huge master. And then you require a pretty big machine on your class to be able to run. As we massively parallel, we don't need the master. Master disappear. There's no definition for master. It's only client. The only thing we need to know is you remember this million thread we have together? We need a scheduler that will enable you to load your machine on your farm, private cloud or public cloud, according to the resource available. And mm. that will do that efficiently. Now, to talk about the use model, it's an interesting one, right? Everybody is scared about sending the data on the cloud. And I understand, right? You as a customer, you have a design, you have third IP in your design. Right. You don't want to go to all your IP provider to request authorization to put that on the cloud. Sure. And then you have the rule deck from your foundry. And that's the same. You don't, you don't want to go to foundry, ask for authorization. The idea we came up, and that's something we're working with the ecosystem to try to enable, right? Is that everything will reside at your environment the design, the rule deck, and the license. And the Pegasus will start on your environment and it will load the design and the scheduler, what I call the scheduler, who is kind of the manager of this minion small thread that you generate, will load automatically the machine with computation, but everything is in memory. Mm, And you do not send the design and you do not send rule deck. What you do is you send a small piece of number of polygons that you need for a given rule and the computation that you need to check that rule. Ah, okay. Give you an example. Metal one spacing on your design. You load your design. You're going to lo- the the scheduler is going to load several metal one polygon, encrypt that in binary code. Only for this part, we'll send that to one of the clients on the cloud or on your farm, mm-hmm. and we'll send operation saying oversize, undersize. That's usual operation for metal one spacing. Meaning the information that go on the cloud is not a rule; it's operation linked to the rule. And again, mm. in memory binary. And then the result will be brought back in your environment as a DRC result. Now, there's always the question, okay, that's really nice. You're in memory, but what happens if you swap? Mm -hmm. Because if one of your machines swap, you're going to write down on that machine. Yes, we'll write down, but that's going to be binary, encrypted. And again, it's related to a small computation, a millionth of your problem, right? It's one piece out of a million breakdown. Even if you can decrypt it, it's one pixel out of the picture. Right. And once the computation is done, after it's done swapping, it's going to remove this encrypted file. Mm, okay. I, I know as a customer, you're looking at it, and depending how big you are and how you consider, you know, your farm can leverage this. You know, you could have your user here and your farm is in India. Right. Part in India, part in China, part here. And then this use model will work really well for you. Mm-hmm because you don't send a full design there, you send pieces of the design. It's like right. you send a pixel at a time, it's really efficient. If you have a private cloud, you have exactly the same. Private cloud is just extension of your hardware. For the public cloud, then, you know, we're working with ecosystem to make sure that, you know, it's going to be supported and load. And we think we'll get there with this kind of use model. Because again, you don't send any IP somewhere you don't control. Right. Okay, so Christian, I'm probably not going to build my own private data center. <laughs> what do the costs really look like? Yeah, I mean, if you look, there's two costs that you look at. It's one is the hardware, and that's you know, it's depending you know the size of your company. If you're a large company, you'd have your own farm. If you're a small company, you'd have your own farm, and you might look at cloud for peak usage. But also the question comes on the license, right? The current EDA model for licensing is like you want more CPU, you pay more license. Right, and then. Our differentiation and our true added value is on scalability. We do not want to penalize the customer to go use our tool in the best environment possible. Nice. We, we will have a kind of package that for a fixed number of licenses, you can run as many CPU as you want. And that will give you a lot of flexibility also when you're in a competitive environment and you don't know how many CPU you're going to have. Right. You could run on 200 CPU because you say, okay, I can only afford that in license. But, you know... As a customer, we have a customer in, uh, in testing that they say, okay, let's run 500 CPU. I will never get the 500 CPU because of competing project. But the tool will take care of himself. Mm. It will grow the usage if resource become uh, available and the resource disappear, then it will retract. It's what we call elastic computing. That gives a lot of flexibility to user. Cool. Okay. So what's the performance story here? If we look at what we work, right, we, we look at sweet spot and different design and technology node. We know what will be the sweet spot for a given 
design in a given technology and we give guideline to our customer. But what we saw right now with customer like you is we see anywhere from 5.7 to 12x speed up. Okay. Meaning we, we, we close to our 10x goal and we're still working on that. And we have some example where we run on 360 core and the run went from 30 hours to 2.7 hours. That's, nice. that's pretty nice. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what about scalability then? Yeah, you know, again, scalability, as I say, is something that we want to push. And we did some benchmark with some customer on cloud. And we can show some really nice near linear scalability on cloud uh, up to 960 CPU. With some customer, we did even on, you know, not that advanced node, some nice scalability on 160, 320, and 640 CPU. And then as soon as you go to the FinFed technology, then the 1000 CPU scalability is there. And we're not going to stop there. We imagine that, you know, past 10, 7, 5, 3, you will need thousands of CPU and you better be pretty linear. Right. Okay, so Christian, do I need Pegasus for my whole chip? For you, all chip, full chip is good advantage, but you can see also some advantage at the, at the large block okay. or small block. Yeah. You will get performance improvement across the board. One of our customers look at small block and they see anywhere from three to seven X, depending on the number of CPU, the size of the design. But also it's it changed totally the dynamic in our customer. Our customer, like you, when they were running the tool before, it was like a necessity. You know, they knew that if they run a large block, a full chip is going to take hours or days and they really limited the number of iteration. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you know, one of our customers is coming back saying, you know, my small block, I can run over a coffee break. My large block or small design is full cheap. I can run over lunch break. And my really large full cheap, I can run overnight. Nice. I can go back to overnight. Meaning you can really take advantage of this technology across the board. Excellent. Okay, so I think I got the deal on the performance, but Christian, we're not in a vacuum of space here. Oh, what am I going to get in my real design? Can you give me a real world example of Pegasus in action? Yes, and, and, and there's two things you have to look, right? Pegasus is a brand new technology. Of course, we optimize for the latest, greatest CPU, right? Like our sweet spot right now, it's machine that has 16 core per host, 16 gigabyte of memory per host, which are latest, greatest. But our customer doesn't have all this kind of machine available. You right. know, they would have heterogeneous kind of machine. There will be small machine, big machine, 16 core, four core per host, 16 gigabyte, four gigabyte per host, and they will be competing. And then uh, one of our customer that like you is run in a real farm environment where it's their farm, where all the project work concurrently and is everybody's fighting for CPU. Yeah. And despite it was heterogeneous and there was a, a nice fight for resources, we could show anywhere from two to six X speed up. This was a customer that we show a seven X speed up in our vacuum. Meaning okay. we're really close to what we, we advertise. Nice. The idea overall, if you look at the performance, right? Either in vacuum or, you know, dedicated CPUs or you farm or you cloud. It's really, we, we think DRC right now was walking. We used to crawl, we walk. <laughs> now is the first generation, it's time to fly. And nice. you know, that's the idea behind the Pegasus. Excellent. So if my audience wants more information, where would they go? They should go to cadence.com, right? And we have a product page or they could uh, type Pegasus verification system on Google. Not Pegasus only, verification <laughs> system. Excellent. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Hey, before you go, don't forget to click that link. There you can find out even more information about the Pegasus Verification System from Cadence Design Systems. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to YouTube, keyword EE Journal, or check out the Chalk Talks section of eejournal.com.